Well, here's what we're working on now. This is a fuel tank that goes to the fertilizer truck. And I've patched it before, however, these patches have done rotted through. So we're gonna put another patch on top of a patch. We got a little wetness here. And uh, obviously that hole there. So we're gonna put a patch on each side and get this on the truck so we can load fertilizer. So I've already ran a wire wheel over it. I've gotta run a grinder around this patch, this piece, and then get some sheet metal laid down, get her welded. Fun stuff. Answer. Hello? What's going on? good thanks we'll see ya
All right, so we've got one patch all completely welded down. You've seen that get done. Now I got to do the same thing over there. It's basically going to be the same procedure. Just weld around it. Patrick from Kaz Equipment is charging the AC. On 8320R, I pulled that corn planter out of here and I had the AC a rolling and she wasn't doing too good. So he was here working on a skid steer. And I said, hey, look at that AC, will ya? And he, uh, he's on her. How you making out? You got that def pump figured out? Must have been crystallized in the handle, hey? Well, that's good. You got that going. All right. All right. So we've got both patches all welded down. Now what we're going to do is we're going to pressure test this. And what I'll do is I'll cap, put the fuel cap back on. We'll flip it over naturally. And I'll cap one of the, actually I'll cap both of the inlet and the outlet fuel line that I could just blow air in through the vent itself. Put 10, 15 pounds on it, spray water on it. And see if I get any air bubbles out of it. But this tank has been patched. I think I went after a hole here. And then by the time I welded it there, another one came. So I wrapped both ends. And where it sits on the fuel tank holder, it, it just rusts out there. I tried looking for a used tank but i could not find one and even the used ones that were kind of representative of size and vintage of this one they were like five or six hundred bucks so if we can just keep patching this one that'll work so we'll uh roll this over get her capped and uh start pressurizing it okay so we have couple of pipe plugs in there we've got our vent tube and we've got our cap on there so we'll hit it with some air and then we'll just soap all around these welds i don't like this spot right here and down through here was a little iffy as well so you seen me drill the hole and i drilled the hole in there because i had some fuel and some moisture coming out from between the two pieces and I figured that that was the lowest spot and with the hole in there it would drain back into the tank. So I had that weep out on me a couple of times and it didn't get a secure weld. So we'll try it and see what we got. And we've got one right here. So we'll note that, let our air out of the tank, and then we'll go ahead and fix that. We've got one there. We've got one.
uh, we could kind of see this spot right here where it's coming out of. So we might be able to just lap a weld over the top of that. This one here, um, some contamination, some crap got into the weld as I was welding it. So we'll get this on its top and go after it again here. Well, if anybody has fixed a rusty fuel tank, you know exactly what I'm dealing with. I got another little rust hole right here. I see it was damp. I put a little grinder on it. I figured I'd maybe be able to just dab it quick and it punked right through. So we're gonna put a patch from here to here to here to there. Does that make any sense? We gotta get into some good meat here and try to get that covered up, but we might have to go farther and farther and farther. So let's <laughs> get another piece cut for that. We'll grind it all out and then put a patch over it. Well, there we are. Our third patch, five by 17. Cap it, air it, water it, soap it. Let's see if it leaks. <laughs> this side's pretty good. Some paint will do that good. Got one right there. another bead of weld there well after I got that done I dug out this broken stud here and another one right there we got lucky they came out there's one there I don't know where the other one went so we'll air this guy up make sure that doesn't leak anymore and then we're gonna get some primer on it
are in good shape. Three patches and we're good. We need to get this thing going. So we're gonna get some primer on this. We're gonna get that other corn planter inside and we are gonna call it a night. So I'm gonna go ahead and push all this moisture off. And then we'll throw some paint on it quick in the morning. And uh, get it thrown on the truck. They want a field start that corn planter here in the morning, the new one. So, let's go ahead and throw some primer on. All right, we have our holes patched in and we threw some primer on it. Now what we probably should have done is wrapped all the way around this tank. Uh, with more metal, but we need to just get this going. This will last a long time like that. It has been, it was expired last time we welded it. So that was 12 or 13 years ago. And uh, if we get another bout of time out of it, ah, <laughs> uh, that'll be good. So. What we're going to do now is we're just going to back this out of the way. This needs to dry. We are going to call it a night. We're going to get that other 16 row planter in here. We're going to field start the new one tomorrow. Then tomorrow night it's going to rain for a few days. So we're only going to concentrate on one planter. I'd like not to plant any corn tomorrow, to be honest with you. Uh, I hate to plant any and then have it rain for several days and have everything sitting. But we need to field start it, make sure there isn't any problems with it. Um, therefore, if there is any problems, then we've got the rain days to get parts allocated and whatnot like that. So we'll pull this out of the way, get the other planter in here, and then that planter we can work on when it gets a raining. So. We'll join up with you guys in the morning. We'll get some paint on that. We'll probably come over here just before we start feeding cows. Paint this quick with a rattle can. And then after we get done feeding, it should be dry and we can slap it on the truck. Get some fuel in it. Load some fertilizer in them tanks and get moving. So we'll join up with you guys tomorrow. All right, so this planter is all set and ready to go. We put the inferral system on there. We put seed firmers. That's how we're going to deliver the product. The product's going to be delivered down into the seed trench, just in after the seed, and then we're going to close the trench with a spiked tooth closing wheel. Um, this took a little while to get this stuff on there we wanted to make sure everything was gonna fold correctly we've got all these hoses going to the individual rows this is our supply hose here to fill the tank with then we've got hoses that go back from the tank to the pump and so on and so forth so we've got a lot that we ended up putting on here um, I would have much rather have put a single pump on each tank and let that one tank, the left tank, do the left side of the planter and the right tank do the right side of the planter. Um, we do have to pay attention to this one hose here. Got to make sure we don't get any rubbings from this uh, number nine row unit. We'll see how that works. But other than that, everything is ready to go um we're going to field start this tomorrow salesman from the dealership is coming out and uh he's just going to go through some particulars there is some new items on this that i have not run yet um the 
uh, brush belt that's going to deliver the seed down to the trench. We need to learn that a little bit. We just need to know what to look for. I have had these units apart. Uh, they come apart very easily. Um, you could pull the bowl off and then that whole uh, belt assembly comes right up out of there. Uh, very easy. So what we're going to do now is we're going to get this parked up. We might as well run this across the scale just to see what everything weighs without any weight in it. Um, I, I don't remember what this tractor weighed, but I do have an empty weight of this tractor. So we'll kind of have to guesstimate what the fertilizer weighs per gallon and how many gallons we've got in it or what we can actually get in it for uh, when we fill, when we fill full. Um, we'll be able to figure out how much seed uh, it holds as well. So let's go ahead and jump on the scale and see what this weighs um, in its lightest form. And then we'll of course weigh the other one too. Uh, the only thing that I that I am not too awful excited about with this one is it only has a 450 gallon fertilizer tank on there. The other one's got a 600. Now, what I should have done is I shouldn't have ordered the fertilizer tank on the planter, and then I should have ordered a 600 gallon tank to throw on after the fact. But the reasoning, because, the reasoning behind deer only putting a 450 gallon tank is because they realize that with the seed tanks in the middle of the planter like that, there's a lot of weight concentrated on the middle portion of that planter. Currently we are 57,000 pounds. And the planter weighs 14.5 um, on the wheels. So we'll have to get the empty weight of just a tractor to figure out how much weight it's putting on the hitch when it's empty and then of course we'll have to also weigh things uh, when it's loaded I don't really like to leave the farm driving down the road with a full planter but we'll have to rejoin that uh, topic when we're around the farm planting um, and then run it across the scale at that point just to kind of get an idea how much weight it's putting on the tractor and whatever else like that so we're just going to park this out of the way here and with that being said I want to thank everybody for watching and we will catch you at the next one